this is one of those rare occasions where we're actually going to sit here and talk to the camera. Hi, camera. <laughs> and we thought, well, we're spending so much time on this boat anyhow. Let's do something that'll slow us down even a little bit more. <laughs> uh, we decided that on the drawing over here, you've got your Aka beam here. And then over here, and this is for the lashing it to the hull. There's a little cleat right there. Well, we decided rather than buy a cleat, we, since we had these already, yeah, yeah some scraps of wood, off, offshoots off of the yeah. beam blocks. Yeah, that I decided not to make as long as what I'd cut. Uh, that uh, we'd make twelve small cleats. Now they call for a three inch cleat in the drawing, I believe. I think it's three. Whatever. We're not making it a three inch. I don't like three inch or two inch or whatever cleats. I like four inch cleats. So these just happen to be four inches wide. So what we did, we took a real cleat and some measurements off of it. Now we do there's a little hole down here in the bottom, if you see. In order to keep the line, the lashing line attached to the hull all the time, there's a, you tie a knot in it, and then you wrap it around five or six times around the Aka beam, and then you tie it off on the cleat. Well, I, this is it's held in place by a knot through this little hole. So that's a very important hole. <laughs> you buy into that? Anyhow, what we did, so it's a fairly simple project. It's really simple, actually. We did add some mass production things to it, but um, the uh, we've got we drilled five holes in a little block. These two up here on the top will be where we drive the screws into the the hull to hold the, the cleat on. These three here are the center one is the little that one, that one, and that one. The little hole in the middle is the one that we will use to tie the line, the lashing line through, and tie a knot in it to hold it on. Anyhow, the other two holes are actually these corner or these spots right here where the the cleat, the horns, the, horn. the horns of the cleat come down, and that just gives you a round spot to to go to. And I know you can't see the pencil lines. I'll take some closer still shots of these so you can actually see the pencil lines on here. But uh, anyhow, that's the plan. And we did. If you use something like this, you establish the center line. On your block here's the here's the one we actually used as the pattern we measured the center line and then the distance over which is oh to the center is approximately let's use the metric side now let's use the inch side <laughs> it's about seven eighths of an inch to the center which I got that number off of the cleat itself. So then after you've marked that, you measure this direction over to get to the center of the block. You use an awl to punch a hole so you know where to drill your holes and that gives also the bit a starting spot. And the same thing for these holes here started out as a, a dent that we put in it with the awl. Now we we drilled all of these on the drill press, but if you don't have a drill press, just use a drill. Works fine. Okay, now we're gonna go to some still shots or else bring the camera over here so that you can see how we marked it up as quickly as possible without doing, turning this into a just a real pain. major production yeah yeah it turned into mass production not a major production 
Okay, like we said, we measured over a certain distance and then we marked several of the, well, we marked one and then we laid the others down and just copied that mark on the rest of them. And then to get to the spot, rather than measure every one individually, we just put, move that to there, hit it with the awl, and did the same thing for these here. In fact, I really got lazy on some of these and didn't even put the line on. Seeing how I had the pattern, say, up the top. Like, eh. Maybe I can get this thing open. Thusly. Yeah, of course, naturally, I had that over there. It gives me a little square surface to work from. Whatever. So, anyhow. And then I had the same distance that I measured on the side up. Can't see it. Oh, right there. Had to measure. Oh, too far up. Too far down. Hey. Yeah, I'm new at this stuff. Whatever. In any case, you get the idea. And then, the one that we've got started here, we will take the bandsaw and cut. Can't see it. Can't see it. <laughs> yeah, well. We will take the bandsaw and cut here, and cut here, cut down, can you see it? Yeah. yeah. Cut down here and across. And then, we'll pause for a second while I do that. And if I cut my fingers off, we will stop the video. Okay, that's a lot heavier duty blade than what we need for cutting this little piece of wood. But we'll use it because I'm not going to change it right now. And Kathy's providing light because I'm blind. <laughs> Noisy sucker, wasn't it? And if it was vibrating, we won't be showing that in any case. Okay, this is what it came out looking like out of the bandsaw. Now you notice there is a rounded over thing here. Well, I know you've watched us round things over before with the router here and the round over bit. Well, we're gonna do that around the top, this corner over here, and a little bit under here. I know it won't fit all the way up in there. So, we'll do that, but you don't wanna to listen to the router noise, so uh, we'll pick it up in a minute. Okay, imagine us going all the way around this cleat on every square side except the bottom, just to round it off a little bit, and we won't make you listen to the router. Okay, we left out the boring details of uh, rounding over the straight parts and listen to the router. Okay, now, am I in, in view of this thing? Mm -hmm. We will be hand sanding this now. It's roughly the size of a cleat. It's got a pretty good sized base here that we're going to epoxy to the hull. So we'll round this off a little bit more in here with a file or whatever. But uh, that's fairly quick. But uh, like I said, after we get it sanded, we'll show you a picture of it. Can you show them what you got there? Don't got a screwdriver. <laughs> the sandpaper. Inside a piece of sandpaper. And, I mean, you know, depending on how big a groove you want in there, you can choose a different size screwdriver. Am I in camera? Yes, <laughs> okay. After a little bit of hand sanding, rounding over with the router. It came out looking like this, which not too bad to me. In any case, uh, I showed the picture of the small cleats for small boats, but uh, that are actually in Clinker Plywood, Ian Otrid's book on clinker 
built boats and uh, he's got some suggestions you can use them for thumb blocks thumb cleats uh, jam cleats regular old cleats and uh, as long as you get the wood grain running end to end here any compression loads that you have will be held down so the wood's not going to split this direction so use uh well in fact back on that page it's suggested oak ash uh i'm using sapili mahogany and we know that uh James Warren believes in wooden cleats because that's a wooden cleat. Needless to say, you can make any length of cleat that you want to and just make sure that you make them proportional.